Hey guys, so welcome to our new lesson method. Um, so notice the do now. We did have a quiz planned. I'm going to put that on the classroom. Please take that on paper or, and send me a picture of it. If anyone has a good method for doing that, please share with me. Because aside from you guys taking pictures and emailing them to me, I'm not really sure the best way for that to work. Um, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to grade it in terms of quiz grade going in as a quiz versus a homework. I might be putting assessments and some of them in as homework because I'm not sure how to keep it so that I know you guys aren't cheating. So, but please do that more so I can see that you understand the material. All right. So this is the lesson that I keep, we kind of talked about, but I never formally taught. So this was our lesson for today, actually. So we only have about two or three weeks of material left. So beginning of April, we will be done with calculus so that we can review. All right, so we kind of talked about this. We saw this in some of our problems, linearization. So linearization is the idea that when you make your tangent line, right, the blue is the tangent line, the red is our function. If we get in really, really close, right, if I go in really close right in there, right there, it looks like a line. So you can use linearization or a tangent line to estimate a function value. So as I got really, really close, I think I can zoom in, as we get really close right in, he, right in there, you can see that there's not a big difference between the function and um, the curve. So we create a tangent line, which we call that the linearization of it, and then we plug in to estimate our actual function. Right. So we have, whoopsies, didn't need to do that. This is going to be fun. It's my first time doing this. All right. So we have theorem linear approximation. So literally, this is just the equation of a tangent line. It's just fancy looking. So y equals, that's our y0, our, our function value. f prime of x0, that's our, that's our slope x minus x0. So it's literally the tangent line formula. They just brought the y0 from the left side over to the right. It was over there and they just brought it over. So it's just, we're just making a tangent line and they're just giving it a name of L of x so that it has a function name. Okay, so find the linear approximation to f of x equals sine of x near x equals 0. So we have to start with our point. So I'm gonna, I remember when we make a tangent line, we need our slope and we need a point. So they're telling me my x value is zero. If I plug in f of zero, sine of zero is just zero. So we have the point zero, zero. And then we need our derivative to find our slope. f prime of x, derivative of sine is cosine. And this is gonna take me a while to get used to writing on this thing. So f prime of 0, cosine of 0 is 1. So then I'm just going to do my L of x equals, so it's my slope, 1, x minus 0, plus my y value. So we ended up just getting L of x equals x, all the zeros. And then we're going to approximate the linear approximation f of x at 0, so L of zero is zero, right? Kind of a silly example, but it's just kind of starting out. So then we're gonna use that to approximate sine of negative 0.3, sine of 0.1, sine of 0.4, sine of 0.5, and sine of pi over four. So L of negative 0 0.3, it's just going to be negative 0 0.3. So it's just since L of x equals x, L of 0.1 is 0.1. L of 0.4 is 0.4. L of 1 half is 1 half. And L of pi over 4 is pi over 4. So now what we can do is what I did was I went on my graphing calculator, grab your graphing calculator, and look at the actual. 
So if we plug in negative 0 0.0, make sure you're in radians. So sine of negative 0.3 is the actual is negative 0.92955. So it's pretty close. Sine of 0.1 is 0 0.0998. 0 0.4, oops, sine of 0.4 is 0 0.389. Sine of 0.5 is 0.479. So notice how, like, the farther away from zero we're getting, like, negative 0.1 is really close to zero, right? This is pretty close to zero. The farther away from zero we're getting, the more inaccurate it is, right? So if we do pi, the pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, right? Sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, which is, whoopsie. We're going to choose 707, I think. Let me just check it. Yeah. So this is 0 0.707. And then if you put in your calculator, pi over 4, it's 0 0.785. So the farther away from 0 you're getting, because that's the point we used to create our tangent line, the more inaccurate it is. So you always want to pick a point that's really close. Okay. All right, next. So I haven't actually seen these on the AP test, but when you're doing um, linearization, this is probably one of the most common uses for it, is you have a square root function or some root, and you want to estimate what that root is if you don't have a calculator. So again, we want to, we need a point and a, and a slope, right? So slope and a point. So to do this, we're talking about a square root. So think about what square root do you know that's really close to 66? Because we want something close, right? Well, we do know that the square root is 64. So we're going to have our point 64. And the square root of 64 is 8. So that's the point we're going to use because it's close to 66. To find our, our slope, we take the derivative. So f prime is 1 over 2 root x. f prime of 64 is 1 over 2 times the square root of 64 is 8, 1 over 16. So now I'm going to write my actual tangent line, L of x equals my y value, 8 plus 1 over 16, x minus 64. And we're going to use that to estimate the square root of 66. So L of 66 equals 8 plus 1 over 16 times 2. Oops. So that's 8 plus 1 eighth, which is 8.125, if I'm not mistaken. And let's grab our calculator and estimate. Let's see what that, what that actually is. Square root of 66, in actuality, when I grab... Plug it in my calculator, I get 8.124. So that's pretty close, right? So if you don't have a calculator or before there were calculators readily available, this was a good method for figuring out what a square root equals. All right, next one. So here is a practice AP question, multiple choice. Pause the video and see if you can do number one on your own. So what is the linearization of f of x equals e to the x at x equals 1? So again, I need my point, and I need my slope, so at 1. So if I plug in 1, I get e, and then f prime of x equals e to the x, plug 1 in again, is e. So my linearization, so they're using y instead of L of x. So y equals my y value, e, plus my slope, e, x minus 1. We're going to simplify that. The e's end up canceling out. 
So y equals ex. What is the linearization at x equals 1? So they're asking when they say the linearization, they want an equation. So b. Pay attention, like they don't want you to actually estimate, they just want that, um, the equation. All right, let f be a function with f of 0 equals 1 and the derivative. So this is a good one because we don't know how to find the antiderivative of that. Like that, we have never learned that. We don't have a method for that. Um, we can't do a u substitution. So this is where this would actually be helpful because I have no idea what that original function is. So we're going to start, find our L of equals. So we need f prime of 0. So that's cosine of 0, which is 1. So L equals, sorry, it's hard. I, I can't like rest my hand. So writing on this is weird. 1 plus 1 times x minus 1. Nope, just kidding. So our linearization is just x plus 1. Estimate the value of f at point 0.1. So L of point 0.1 equals 1.1. And we're done. All right, so here's an actual AP question where it's part B. It's This is pretty common for an AP question, but again, it's not going to be a whole part. It's just going to be a piece of it. So why don't you pause the video and see if you can figure this out on your own. So let f be a differentiable function. Second derivative of f. So this is actually going to be important. Remember, they don't give you this stuff for no reason. That the f prime is always great. f double prime is always greater than zero. So then it wants me to write an equation of a line tangent to f at the point where x equals 1. So tangent line. So in these, you can write L of x. You can write uh, y. It doesn't actually matter. Oops, I did not change it off of All right, pen. All right, so I have the x value 1. I'm going to go up to the table where x is 1. My y value is negative 4. And my derivative is my m, and that's 5. So I'm going to do it y equals. So y plus 4 equals 5 times x minus 1. So that's the, that first part. So now I'm done with that. Use the line to approximate the value f of 1.2. So y of 1.2 equals negative 4 plus 5 times 1.2. This is a, it's an AB6, if you notice at the top. This is not a calculator, so you could actually leave that. You could stop right now if you wanted, um, but I'm going to figure this out anyways, plus 6, so I get 2. All right, so that's my estimation, y of 1.2 is 2. And then it says, is the approximation greater than or less than the actual value f of 1.2? So again, I never really, for I don't think I ever formally taught this, so the second derivative has the property that f is greater than zero. So what is the second derivative? It's the concavity. They're saying the concavity is greater than zero all the time. So this thing is concave up. If the graph is always concave up, if you look back at what our definitions were of like the tangent of concavity, it's actually how the tangent line falls. So this tangent line is going to be below the graph. That means what we just found is right here while the actual function value is right there. So it's a little below. So it's an underestimate. Underestimate because f is concave up over the interval. All right, so that's our practice AP problem. I think we got one or two more. I can't remember. Okay, so another. Now, this is AB14. So this is a multiple, clearly a multiple choice. 
if the tangent line, let f be differentiable function. Okay, so pause the video, try this one on your own. So I've got the point 3, 2, and m equals 5. So L of x equals 2 plus 5 times x minus 3. And then it wants us, to, if the tangent line at x equals 3 is used to approximate the 0. So that's kind of not going to be a very good estimation, I guess. So what does it mean? What's a 0 of a function? That's when the y value is 0. So we're going to let 0 equal 2 plus 5 times x minus 3. So we got negative 2 equals 5x minus 15. So x is 13 over 5. Again, we can do this in our head, guys. We have no calculator. 2.6. So let's see. And that's it. I, thought of it. I guess 2.6 is the x value. That's not too far away from 3. So actually, that's not nearly as bad as I expected. Nope, oh, that's it. We're done. All right. All right. Have a great day. Your homework is a worksheet, but it's actually just problems from the textbook. So you could probably just look for them if you wanted. Um, so do your homework. Send me a picture of it. Have a great day. Let's plan on having a video chat during our normal class on Tuesday. So that's what I'd like you to do. Watch our, this video today, and then tomorrow we will have a little video chat on it. All right. Bye.